guys, Simcoder here and today, as I promised in the previous uh, lesson, we are going to do the post page uh, and we are going to do some redesign of the, um, of the site. We are not going to go full balls to the wall on this one, but yeah, we are going to, I'm going to show you uh, some cool dependencies that you can install and that will make it a lot easier for you to uh, design your, uh, your page. Um, so it's going to be quite simple. Uh, quite a, a chill uh, lesson. We are not going to deal a lot with backend, we are just going to create one endpoint in order to fetch the data of just one post. Because remember, now we can, can only fetch every single post uh, with the endpoint list, so we are going to get one by ID. Uh, so yeah, let's jump into it. Before carrying on with the video, I just want to let you know that only 20% of you are subscribed to the channel. So if you are enjoying this series and want to see more of it, then please do leave a subscribe down below. It will help you to not miss a single video in the future. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is actually to install two dependencies. Uh, and I'm going to show you uh, what they are right here. Let me just give you one second. Okay, so the first one that we are going to install is Material UI. This is my go-to uh, dependency for any design need that I have because they have some material designs in here and they have a lot, a lot of components that will help you tremendously. For example, let me just check in here. We are going to use this uh, uh, component, which is called app bar, which gives you a nice little bar like this with a shadow and all of that. So yeah, you could do all of this by hand like you are more than free to just jump into CSS and uh, do all of this. But personally, I hate coding in CSS, in, in CSS. And so I just use this, keep it nice and simple. And it, the good thing is that your, app, your web app will look similar and uh, will be coherent uh, throughout uh, every single page and every single element. The next one that we are going to use is React Calendar. I, I search around for a calendar that uh, matches uh, the one uh, Airbnb uses. Uh, and Airbnb has one, but it is a, a date picker and not a calendar full on. Uh, and because in uh, Airbnb, and I can show you right now, I'm sorry, I believe this is in Portuguese, but yeah, never mind that. We have this calendar, and this is the calendar that I want to emulate. Uh, it will have just one pane, not two, like this one. But yeah, it will match uh, the, the Airbnb feel quite nicely. And with this React calendar, we are able to pick between a range, we are able to disable tiles. This is the most full dependency with all of the, the features that we need that I've found. So this is the one that we are going to use. So in order to, first of all, install both of these dependencies, I'm going to jump into the terminal, zoom it a bit, change to the front end, folder and simply come in here, grab the npm i uh, react calendar. This will uh, install the react calendar for us. And I have to be in sudo because otherwise it will give me a permission error. Let me just change that. Yeah. And there we go. And then for the material UI, you just want to come into the front page and copy the npm install at material uh, iPhone UI slash core and you can again just install it and it is giving me the permission error I have to change the permissions on these folders but with sudo that is fixed okay so it was really fast and we can simply move this out of the way okay so now uh, it is finished Installing, you can simply go in here and say code dot. If you're using visual code, I believe this is just for uh, the visual code uh, part. So let me just close that up. Okay, there we go. This is where we left off in the previous lesson. And uh, now the first thing that uh, we are going to do is to go into the functions. Uh, we are going to create the endpoint right away. That way uh, we don't need to, do, uh, to worry about that in a later stage in development. So we are going to a uh, function uh, posts.js and routes.js. Make this a tiny bit less zoomed in, <laughs> otherwise it is way too much. 
And now we are going to uh, simply copy the create function uh, route just so that we can have uh, the boilerplate of, a, of a, um, an endpoint. Change this into a get because now we are going to get not post. We are not going to write anything into the database. We are not going to receive uh, these much uh, uh, parameters. We are just going to receive uh, one parameter actually. And let me just come here. Yep. We are just going to receive one parameter. And that parameter will be the ID of the post. So the ID of the post, we can simply say ID equals to rec dot query. Okay, that's it. And now uh, we are going to uh, pass that ID into a function that we are going to create right now. So we will be calling it get by ID. Uh, and this uh, is the function that will take care of fetching that uh, post. So you can, I'm actually going to just grab the list posts and change the name. Remember, we are passing the ID. And now, uh, to get a post by ID, it is really, really simple because Mongoose uh, offers you um, a function that's called find by ID. Uh, isn't that nice? Uh, we just have to, to pass along the, the ID of the post and it will, it will search uh, for a post with that ID and give you a result. Uh, you can also uh, use the find uh, one uh, and then pass along the ID, but with the find by ID, it is really uh, straight to the point and you don't have to worry about anything. So in the result, I'm just going to uh, print out uh, the result and resolve with the result. Uh, we don't have a catch, but I'm going to place it uh, just in case. Uh, so catch, error, and then reject new error, error. Okay, the, uh, this is the, the better way of doing the, the catches. And then just drop it in the list post as well because it is missing one, so yeah. Okay, so now the, the, the endpoint is mostly done. All you have to do now is come in here and uh, let me just check what I called it. Yeah, I call it get. So uh, just change the, the last uh, part to end, uh, to get, and then the, our route is done. We don't have to do anything else in the backend. So I'm going to close all of these out. I'm going to close all of the folders. And I'm going to come into the front end and let's start to play with material UI and all of that good stuff. The first thing that I, we are going to do is uh, to create a post page. So post.js. And then uh, remember, I have one um, uh, plugin installed in my VS code, which is this one ES7 React Redux, whatever uh, snippets. And this is really cool because in order to create a component, you can just type RCE and it will create the component for you. You don't need to remember all of this boilerplate stuff, which is quite difficult to remember. And quite frankly, I don't have the patience for that. So yeah, this is how we are going to do it. Now, uh, in order to create our post page, we are going to uh, have, first of all, a constructor. And this constructor, uh, is the first uh, function that is called whenever a component is created, obviously. Um, and it is passed on the props of this component. Uh, props include a lot of things like the ID of the, um, uh, the, the, the ID that's at the end of an endpoint, for example, of an URL in this case. Uh, so then we can simply say super props. And then we can initialize our state. So what are we going to need uh, within our state? We are going to need the info of the, the web app because we are going to have to access it in the render somehow. Uh, so we'll have info and we'll set the info to null whenever this component is created. And then we'll need uh, one little thing which is called disable days, which I call disable days. That's the better way of putting it. 
So disable days will be all of the days that are meant to be grayed out within the calendar and that way the user won't be able to, to choose uh, days that are already booked. Uh, and we are not going to take care of the logic of it, we are not going to create any endpoint in this lesson, but you'll get things ready so that uh, next time when we want to uh, start creating the endpoints, it will be really simple to implement them in the front end. So disable days, and this will be an array with dates. So dates, and let me check what day it is. It is 2020, 12, 5. Uh, this is in the American way of uh, <laughs> putting dates. So uh, remember, year, no, uh, it is in the American way, right? Uh, yeah, it is in the American way. So uh, year, day, month. And I'm going to copy it and put in another day, like the 19th of May. Uh, this is just to show you how the disable tiles work. Okay, uh, then in, we're going to jump into the component div mounts. Remember, this is the function that is called right after the component has finished doing all of the, the things that you need to do in order to, to be displayed to the user. So, now we'll have... Uh, we, uh, in this post page, we'll have to get the ID that the user wants to wants to see somehow. Okay, and uh, for example, uh, not this one in here. Uh, this is our page, and I didn't put uh, our startup running. Let me just do it really fast. Okay, we'll have, for example, posts. Then we'll have an ID. And this ID will be a series of characters that we don't care about. But you might ask, how can we get this ID? Okay, this is where props come in. We can uh, use them in order to get their information uh, right away. So we can simply say in here, ID equals to this dot props dot match ramps. And this will get us that ID. Uh, because uh, in when we route, we are going to when we route, and this will be in the app.js, which we'll get there in a second. We'll have it some, something like this. So uh, post imagine here. So post uh, slash uh, two points ID, and this will allow us to get the ID within uh, the props. So let me just clear that out. Okay. And now uh, we'll do an access call just like we did uh, before. So access dot get http one two seven dot zero dot zero dot one, and this in the the final part of this series, I'll move uh, this URL into an environment uh, variable. So that way, if you want to move from a production server to a development server and so on, uh, it is really simple. All you have to do is change one variable and the entire app will follow uh, that app. And then uh, 6200, which is the port, again, API, post, list, and then you'll pass along the params, which in this case is just the ID. That's everything that our uh, backend needs in order to, to work. Oops, not the brackets right away. So then results arrow function, and that's it. We need a parenthesis in there. Okay, so now I'm going to log the results so that you can see you can remove all of the logs this is just to show you how it everything works this dot state uh, this dot set state better yet set state yeah and then we'll just update the info with the the res dot uh, the results yeah results dot data okay so there we go we can also Remember, it's a good thing to catch any errors that might appear. So, error. 
installer error. Okay, I'm not going to do anything with the error, but uh, maybe if I launch a redesign or, or something like that, yeah, I will handle all, all of these errors and display uh, pretty managed messages to the user so that you can know uh, what happened. Okay, so now we can move on to the rendering phase of the, the process. So, uh, the first thing that we want to do is to get the info. So we can, uh, instead of being always writing this.say.info, what we can do is before uh, returning, we can say uh, const info within curly brackets, this.state. This way we'll always have access to that variable uh, regardless. Okay, and we don't need to do a console log here, but yeah. Uh, now, uh, let's just do, uh, first of all, the, and I don't have an Airbnb page here. Uh, yeah, the, but uh, I'm sure you, you know what it looks like. So, uh, the Airbnb has uh, the header of the web page, then uh, quite a big uh, images which will uh, fill out the width of the page. Then it has two columns, uh, one to display the information of the, um, the listing, the post, and another to reserve uh, the rooms. Okay, and that's what we are going to try to emulate. Uh, it, obviously, it isn't going to be um, straight full on uh, like it, but it will give you uh, some good foundation in order to work with it. Okay, so the first thing that we want to display is the image. And like we did before, we have the image. I want this to close right away. Okay, so first of all, we want a class name and it will be post header image. Uh, this will be used in order to change the style of the, the image. Then the source of the image, which will be the URL of the image, will be info.image URL list, like we did in the previous lesson, zero. I'm going to assume that zero is the default image and uh, that way it makes everything really simple. Let me just check if our uh, server is up and running. Um, yep, but it is giving me a config error. Let me just come in here. Config, config, config. Oh, it is missing the config folder. I'll fix that in a second. Um, okay, so that is displaying. Uh, actually, I'm going to fix it right now so I can show you uh, what happened. So give me a second. Meanwhile. Okay, so I just um, rebuilt the config folder because it is in the git ignore and I had to pull uh, it to in order to clean up everything that we did in the previous lesson. But that's be besides the point. As you can see in the list uh, page, we are not able to pick uh, a house, uh, a post to go into. So that's one thing that we have to fix before we are able to do anything else. Uh, and uh, we'll do it uh, really quickly because it is uh, a really simple uh, fix, fix to do. Okay, so let's just come in here, go into list. And in the list, uh, we'll have one element called link, like we did uh, in the app.js, no, not the app.js, in the um, header.js. Uh, this link uh, will uh, take care of uh, routing us to a different page. So I'm actually just going to come in here and copy the link import, and then copy the link as well. Then in here, all we have to do is to drop the link in here. We won't need the the login text anymore, obviously. But now uh, we want to link into a specific specific page, which will be the post with the ID at the at the end. So we can go ahead and get rid of all of, all of this. Open up curly brackets because we'll have some uh, code in here. Then using the backwards, uh, I don't know how you call this, like the backwards quote. Uh, we are we are able to do things like this. So post, and then we can inject uh, our variable right in here. So we can simply do it 
like this. Current post dot underscore uh, ID. And this way uh, we have quite a clean line of code which will uh, link us to the correct page. So now, if you come uh, back in here, just grab it, as you can see, we are able to click it. And if you click it, the post will have the ID of the, the URL will have the ID of the post. Okay, that's exactly what we wanted. So now jumping back onto the post page and uh, isn't displaying this, let me just check. Oh yeah, because we aren't routing it yet. So we have to come in here and create a route for uh, this project, uh, for this component. So let's simply say post, post, then where was it here, post, post. But now, uh, in order to actually display uh, the ID of the project, we have to do, uh, like I said before, the forward slash uh, two points ID. And now I believe uh, axis is not defined. Yeah, I forgot the axis in the post page. So let's just come in here, port axis from There's an error uh, of no. Yep. So uh, when the page first renders, uh, we still don't have, uh, we haven't gotten received the, the info of the post yet. And because of that, whenever we try to access uh, the info in here, it will throw an error because the info is null and it can't get the image URL list of a null. So one way to go about this is simply before returning, checking if info is null or not. So if uh, info is different to, uh, to null, then we can open this up, drop the return in here. But remember, render must always um, return something. So I'm just going to return an empty div uh, while, uh, an empty tag, better yet, uh, while the rendering process is not done for the info of our better yet, while this line isn't called. Okay, so now if we jump right back in here, it will uh, work. Okay, so um, looking at it, it is get and not list. Let's see if that wants to be displayed or not. Uh, it is showing everything as it should be. That's strange. Let me just give it a look. Oh, uh, this dot set state state doesn't exist, obviously. So yeah, that way we are displaying the image. But remember, we want it to be uh, the full width of the page. And to do that, uh, we are going to jump into the styles.css. This is the first time that we write some CSS in the, this uh, project. And we are going to, uh, I'm going to assume you have some knowledge of CSS, but it is really quite simple. So uh, if you have a class name, simply draw a point before the name of the class. If you have an ID, uh, drop an hashtag. If you want to change a full tag, simply say image without anything before that. And what we want to do, and I'm going to come in here and inspect and use that in order to show you. Uh, we want to make the width 100% uh, uh, and that way uh, it will look, it will look uh, really nice and just like uh, the Airbnb tutorial. So in order to do that, we have to do with 100, uh, 100 VW. This will make it so that the image is the width of the, um, the screen. And why isn't it working? With 100 VW. Oh, I have the space. Yeah, forget that. Uh, and we want to make the height like 40 v, uh, v, uh, H, which make the image, uh, the height, 40% uh, of the screen. So 40 V H. And this is typically how I write CSS. I just come in here and open up the, the developer tools and work from there. But as you can see, the image is stretched out and that's not really pretty. So object fits, uh, to, um, 
cover, we'll take care of that. It will uh, make sure that the, the image doesn't stretch. Obviously, it will be cut out, but that's better than having an, a stretch image. Uh, this image is quite low quality, that's why it is so pixelated, but we can make some code in order for the user to always uh, provide an image that's bigger than uh, X pixel, pixels. So that's it. Now, in order to get what the code that we've just written, uh, I'm going to go into the, um, the image, copy that, and drop it here. And then this, okay. So now, uh, when we reload, it will show it uh, correctly. Okay, so that's uh, basically it. Now, uh, for the last part, we want to have um, the information of the post in this side, and then uh, the reserve button on this side, just like Airbnb. We are going to make use of bootstrap columns for this. So we'll have, uh, and remember bootstrap columns are divided, is like, one row uh, is divided into 12 uh, little sections and we can use that to our advantage. So we are going to make sure like that the first section with the post info will have um, the width of seven sections and then the, the reserve button will have the width of four sections. And that's really simple to do. Bootstrap is absolutely amazing, especially for guys like me that hate to uh, do to handle with CSS. So uh, the first thing that we are going to do is to say div class name equals to container. And this container is a um, bootstrap uh, class, which will just make sure that um, th all everything that's within this div is contained to a certain space so that it doesn't take the on the full uh, width of the page and you'll see it working in a second, so don't worry. Uh, but it basically restricts the max width of this uh, div. And we are going to say MT5. Uh, this MT is a bootstrap class again, which just, is, um, just means margin top 5. So it will give a margin to the top of this div uh, of uh, 5. Uh, and 5, I believe it is uh, EM or something like that. Uh, it is the max margin that you can give using these tags, I believe. Then we'll have uh, our row, which again is a bootstrap uh, class. And this will allow us to use the, the columns uh, feature. So row. And then we'll uh, start coding the first uh, parts of the website, which is the info of the, the website. So in this case, we'll have yet another div. Class name. For the class name, we'll have call dot uh, md7. Remember, we want it to have uh, the width of seven columns within the 12 that are within a row. I'm sorry about that. Then we'll have uh, the h1 and we'll start just placing all of the information like we wanted to. So h1 will be the info.title. Then we can just grab that. Uh, we have an info dot, uh, location. I believe the location is what comes next within the, the Airbnb site. And we'll change this to an h5. These page tags are actually quite important for um, SEO purposes. So yeah, be careful about that. Then um, Airbnb has an HR, which is which means horizontal. Uh, it isn't horizontal line, but it, it sh should be that way. I don't really know what the R stands for, R stands for, but it is just a straight uh, horizontal line. Okay. Then we'll have a P, which stands for paragraph, uh, and this P will have a margin top of one, and will contain the description of the, the post. So description. And then finally, we'll have the calendar. The calendar, as you might remember, or should remember, is our React calendar. And you can come in here and see how it works. So we have to import it uh, by adding this line. 
we can actually see how everything is looking right now. It can't resolve the React calendar. Mm, that's strange. Uh, I'm going to quickly stop and uh, reinstall the React calendar to see if that fixes it. Two hours later. Okay, so by uh, reinstalling React uh, calendar, it suddenly starts to work. And yeah, this is how it looks right now. Now we'll have the calendar in the bottom uh, of the um, of this uh, column. And so let's come in here. Let's say React. What we, did we call it? Uh, we call it calendar. So uh, calendar. Close that up. And then uh, we'll simply say. Class name equals to MT5 just to keep some margin up top. Then on change we'll call uh, this dot on change and we'll create this function in a second. Or we'll we can remove this because we don't uh, really need it. But yeah, uh, we'll see how it goes. Value equals to these dot state dot dates. Then we'll have a select range tag. This uh, will allow us to pick between two dates, uh, and we you have all of the information regarding this uh, dependency in here. If you just drop down, you'll see all of the things that you can change, which you can see this dependency is real. This calendar is really flexible. You can do a lot of stuff with it. So that's the reason why I, I picked it. We'll have the select range and then we'll have the tile disabled. This will be for the tiles that are not in use and are in use already yet because people have already booked for that day. So the user cannot no longer pick that um, and if we, we come in here, it should work. Yep, there we go. But it looks really ugly. <laughs> uh, one good thing about uh, this calendar is that it has uh, a style built in. Let me just open up the lights. Import. And we'll say React. This one I have to really carefully pay, uh, pay attention to it. So then this and uh, calendar. CSS. Uh, this is provided by uh, the, the, the developer of this uh, dependency, uh, but you can change it around in, in the CSS. I'm going to leave it like that because it looks good. I mean, there's no problem with it. Uh, the thing with select uh, range is that you can simply do this and pick a range of dates. Uh, so as you can see, this is a really quite cool little uh, dependency. Uh, that's for sure we are going to use the hell out of. Okay, so now uh, one last thing that I want to do is to just get ready the tile disabled uh, variable, uh, or better yet, uh, yeah, the tile disabled variable. Um, and in here it is tile disabled, I made a mistake, because this uh, variable will be called up top. And we'll come in here. Check it, say uh, tile disable equals to open parentheses. Okay. Open parentheses, then it will receive the dates. And this tile disable will be called for each and every single date that's being displayed at the moment, and it will check if that tile can be displayed or not. So then an arrow function. If dates now let's get down to some logic, but this will be quite simple, I, I promise you. So if date is smaller than new date, this uh, new date is the current date, then we'll return true. If you return true for a date, then the tile will be disabled. So if the date that the, the calendar is giving you is smaller than today, then return true. That means that every date previous to today will be disabled because you can't book uh, a, a, a post for yesterday. You have to book for tomorrow. 
So, and I'm actually going to do smaller or equal to. Then uh, we want all of the dates that uh, correspond to the dates that are in the disabled days to are also be disabled. So we can do this by saying um, exclamation point exclamation point this dot state dot disabled days dot dot find and now it will search for each item so item uh, arrow function return item dot get time equals to date dot get time and this will uh, be true whenever the date uh, correspond uh, the date of the calendar corresponds to the a date that's inside the disabled days so if you come in here reload it it's giving me something wrong oh uh, I see the problem uh, it is uh, for yep and I, I believe I told you wrong, it isn't in the American way, the date, it is uh, in the European, or I, I believe every other country follows this uh, standard. Uh, in the dates, uh, it, is, it goes from 0 to 11 and not from 1 to 12. I'm not sure why they did it. Uh, I believe it is quite stupid, in my opinion, but whatever, that's how it is developed. And now uh, you can see that both the 12th of May this is May, not April, uh, and the 19th of uh, May are disabled. Okay, so uh, now this part is mostly done. Uh, I'm just going to add a button to reserve, um, make a request to reserve. And I'm going to say div. This time uh, the call will be 4, because remember it is 12 at most, so Four times uh, four plus seven uh, it will give us. I believe we can do five. Yeah, let's try it like this because I'm really not sure if it goes from zero to eleven or uh, one to ele uh, to twelve. But yeah, you'll see that in a second. Now let's go to use the material UI for the first time. Uh, I'm going to come in here because I want to use a card just like we have in. Uh, Android, uh, if you remember that um, those lessons, and in here uh, I searched around, I went into the components, and there is one called car, which looks like this, which is quite nice, and you have a bunch of examples here. But I want the outlined card. How we do that? Well, we simply uh, grab the imports that we need. In this case, it will be card and contents. Uh, I believe we don't need any anything else. It there, we don't even need the actions, and then uh, coming in here, we'll, we'll use the card outline. So I grab that, card, and then we also want a button. And the buttons from uh, Material UI are actually quite nice, so I'm going to grab one, place it there, and we'll also need to import the button. There we go, and we have the card content uh, uh, wrapping all of that up. So card content, is it there, is it there, and then jumping back onto our uh, where is it? It is in a different page. So uh, classes is not defined. This is because they uh, in the material UI they like to uh, have classes and do styles within the JS, but I will just remove it. And then it says that you cannot re resolve a button. Again, I believe I have to reinstall a Material UI. I'll be back in a second. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. Okay, we are back. And for some reason it didn't uh, uh, install uh, the, the packages like I wanted it to. But there we go, we have a button, but we want to make it uh, a bit prettier, uh, it looks, we can't even see it. So for that reason, I'm, I'm going to jump uh, back in here, the size won't be small, 
I can remove that and we'll have the class name set to let me just remove this to width will be 100 just like uh, in um, the Airbnb sites the margin top will be 5 and then we say post reserve button and uh, we'll go into the styles of CSS and change the color, the background color of the button. So coming here, I can check where, what I, uh, the color that I chose for this. Yeah, it was salmon, which looks similar to the, the one in Airbnb. And we have to set it to important. This is because uh, we have to override the button color that uh, comes from material UI and that the only way of doing this is setting it to important this will override every single background color that material UI has uh, by default then we'll set the color to white this will change the text color and again let's set it to important now coming back to here we have a send button yeah so now change the text to reserve and then finally, uh, we'll just add an H5 uh, tag, uh, which will contain the price per night. So, price per night. And uh, we'll add the dollar sign at the end. And simply say slash night. And there we go. We have uh, the layout like uh, Airbnb uh, has it looks pretty much similar I mean obviously it has some differences and we'll uh, build upon this when we uh, actually make the these uh, calendar work and make all of the endpoints now finally the last thing that I want to do and this is the, the last thing of the, this lesson which is getting uh, a bit quite long uh, is change the, the header. This is the last uh, type of redesign that we'll do in this lesson. So for the post, uh, we are done, I believe. So I'm going to quickly close that and going to header. Uh, I'm going to change this into a component because it is, I, I just prefer to work uh, with components rather than this type of uh, layout. So I'm going to comment this out. And simply type RC using the, the plugin that I show, shown you in the beginning. And uh, we are going to be using uh, this app bar. Okay, so I'm going to copy all of this. We are going to clear out some because we are not going to use all of them, but for, for now, uh, we'll just place everything and then copy the app bar. Going to div. And place it there. Uh, now, uh, if we just open this up again, we have the classes that we are not going to, to use right now. So I'm going to remove them. And we can't find many uh, icons. Uh, we are not going to use the icons. This is a, another library for icons, but for now, we are not going to use them. And the menu uh, icon is not defined. I'm going to remove the icon button. And we have an app bar which look it has uh, a shadow it looks already much better than before uh, actually so yeah the first thing that we are going to do is change the color of the app bar so class name and we'll give it the name of app bar jump into the styles.css app bar and in uh, Airbnb the background color is white so I'm going to Grab it here, set it to white, and the color of the text is black, uh, mostly black. It is a, 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 shade, a shade of black, uh, but uh, yeah, it looks pretty much like this. Uh, now, uh, jumping back into the header, we are going to change the typography to Airbnb. You could use a straight uh, H6, but I'm going to follow the, the material UI. Uh, tags in order to show you how to work with it. Um, so Airbnb and I'm going to say clone in the end. Okay, Airbnb clone. 
Now we want uh, the login to be at the end of this uh, navbar and uh, we want uh, the login button to be like a fab button from Android and we can do that uh, really quite easily. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is to actually uh, place a link and I'm going to grab the link. Uh, where do we have a link? We don't post, I believe we have a link here, no. In the home we have a link. Yeah, we have a link here. Uh, come in here, remove the, the, the button, put the button, the icon button, better yet, and have a link. Uh, this is so that we can um, click buttons and go somewhere. So in here, let's say link to, and when we link the Airbnb clone um, H6, uh, we'll go to the home page. So simply put a forward slash, then close that up with the link. And there's some kind of mistake, yeah, I forgot to do that. Now anytime we click this, we'll go straight to the link. Okay, but it is uh, blue and it has an underline which we don't have want it uh, to, to have, and this is because it is a tag 80. If we click it, uh, inspect it, you will see that it is an A. And the way of um, removing the underline is really, uh, really, really simple. All you have to do is go into styles, A, because uh, this will mean that every single A tag in this um, project will follow these rules, which is text, decoration, none. This will remove the underline, okay? Uh, that way it just looks uh, way better. Um, then in the other, in the typography, I believe, uh, yep, um, yes, it can be in the typography, you'll have the class name equals to app bar title. We'll use this to, in order to, to change the color, but let me just check one thing, save, 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 if we reload it, it still isn't um, setting the text dec decoration, so let's try to change this to important, okay, it removed the underline, now for the title, uh, which is, we'll have to come in here and say, F bar title, color set to black. Strange, let me just check. A bar title, if it is missing the capitalized B, and there we go, you have the Airbnb clone, and if you click it, we'll go to the home page. Now, uh, for the login button, we want it to be uh, a fab button, which um, Material UI actually uh, has, so we can, you can find it in the components, come in here and grab um, fab, and we want this fab without the icon, so we can just drop the fab there, yep. And as you can see, the fab, uh, you have a lot of fabs that are being displayed here. The one that we want is the extended one, because it is the, the one that is not round. So we can simply come in here, fab, fab, and then drop the login within it. If we come in here, we have a login but it isn't uh, really similar to what we want. We want it to be white and we want uh, all of these links to be in the end of the page uh, in here. So there's a really simple way of doing this using the, the bootstrap classes, which is uh, by uh, setting the margin uh, left to auto and this will push everything to the, the most uh, right uh, side corner of the parent uh, tag. Uh, so yeah, let's do that. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is to involve this within a div. Try to 
flat. And then class name equals to oh uh, class name uh, not that uh, m l r like that and as you can see everything was pushed to the right okay so now uh, some th some things that we want to do we want to make the background of this uh, white because that's how it is within uh, in the um, Airbnb uh, page. So at bar, login. Come in here. At bar login, background color to white. And don't forget the important, otherwise it won't uh, change anything. As you can see, it changed to white when you have a fab button, just like um, Airbnb does. Okay, so yeah. Uh, now, uh, I'm going to quickly do some things uh, with uh, the, um, the login and the off system. And to do this, uh, I want to display login whenever the user is not authenticated and uh, sh uh, show logout whenever the user is authenticated. So for that, you'll need to import Firebase. On Firebase. then open up curly brackets and do some uh, conditional rendering. This is really simple. All you have to do is uh, Firebase auth dot current user. If it is equal to null, then it puts the um, interrogation points. This will be for uh, if the user is, current, uh, is um, equal to null. Then we'll have two points which will render uh, if the user is different from null, which means the user is logged in. So log out in this case, and then log in if the user is equal to null. Um, okay, so that's basically it. Uh, now we have to handle the logout. So on click, is dot handle logout. This is a function that we haven't created yet, but we will uh, right now. So simply grab that, come at the top, create the function. And in Firebase, in order to log out, all you have to do, uh, like in Android, if you come from those uh, series, uh, it is really simple. Like all you have to do is uh, Firebase auth dot sign out. And that's it. The user, if click, he clicks the button, then uh, this line will log out the user okay and uh, within login we want it to link to the login page so I'm going to grab the link and go to login let's see how it looks okay uh, so if you click login we'll go to login uh, but as you can see uh, right now we aren't logged in so I'm going to try to log in and when we do log in uh, one thing that will happen is the button will won't change so we will need an off state uh, change listener an off state change listener to be always listening for uh, off uh, changes so that we can uh, change the button automatically uh, into this because uh, it won't re-render when the user logs in so we have to force it to re-render uh, that will be really simple. We'll do that uh, in a second. Uh, for now, we want to add the, um, the pages that I believe I have it here. So we want to add the create and the list page. Uh, this isn't in the Airbnb page, but it is better to have it here because it makes our life really uh, simpler to in order to move around within the project. So we could just do that, this, but the buttons look uh, really uh, strange and I'm going to remove this button grabbing it so I'm going to place a button within the link this will make it look a lot uh, better just remove that going to the page and it still has the that color so we'll have to add um, the color isn't going to be inherent uh, remove the inherit and there we go we have a button that if you click you'll go to the create page 
and another link. Uh, but this time it will be for a list. Okay, and there we go. You have all of the buttons. The navbar looks way better right away. So yeah, now the only thing that's left uh, for us to do is to uh, listen to the, um, the off states changes and uh, re force a re-render anytime the, the off changes. That will be done within the app. And again, uh, I would prefer to have a component here. Uh, so I'm going to type in RCE and do that. And I'm going to simply, to simply grab the, the, the HTML, HTML of this and uh, paste it there. Uh, so it doesn't change all that much and also grab all of the imports and paste them there remove the, the react one because we want this one that has the components also so uh, now to do an off state uh, change the listener all you have to do is in the component in mount call a function that uh, firebase provides which is called uh, on off state changed so firebase oh and we'll need to import Firebase as well. So import Firebase config. So let me just do this. Firebase with, uh, without the curly brackets, otherwise it won't find it. So Firebase off dot on off state changed user arrow function. And uh, in order to force an update, uh, a re-render of every single component, because that's what we want to do uh, whenever the user logs out or logs in, all we have to do is this dot force update, and it will forcely, uh, force a re-render of the entire project. I'm going to remove uh, the function in here, uh, leave the exports, and there we go. Let me just check if everything is done. Identifier has already been cleared. Yeah, that will clear up. Uh, and let's try to log out. The user logs out. When we click login, it will automatically change the logout. At least that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, give it some time and log out. There we go. So yeah, that's it. Uh, this page still looks uh, a bit off. We'll take care of that in a later stage of the development process. But we have all of the elements done and ready to, in order to actually make reservations and uh, move on the, uh, with the back end of our project. So we did a lot today. Um, that's one of the reasons why I tr uh, tried to not handle a lot of redesign within the, the apps because it takes a lot of time to do uh, redesign then it isn't all that interesting because you don't have a lot of logic within it. But I hope you learned how to use dependencies uh, that have design uh, elements like Material UI. They are really, truly great. Uh, so get used to using them because they make your life a lot easier. Um, but yeah, that's uh, it for today. Um, I hope you guys are staying safe with the COVID stuff out there. And yeah, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Ciao!